Hey man, praise the Lord. I want to attempt to get you guys this video and I tried to do live but because I don't have the proper equipment to keep my phone stable and what have you, I'm going to do it this way. Amen. Praise God. So let's start with prayer. Amen. Heavenly Father, as we come to you today, on today, God, another precious day that you have given us to be with you and and to bless us by waking up and being able to say today is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. God, I'm so glad that you woke me up this morning. I'm so glad that you woke up my 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 family and my friends and my spiritual children, Lord. I'm so glad, Lord Jesus, that you woke up all my loved ones that is important to me, God, and it's important to you. And for those that are around the world, God, everyone that is important in our lives, Lord, I thank you, Father, for everything that you have done for me, Lord. I thank you for your love and your mercy and your compassions. I thank you for looking upon us, O oh God, because we need you, Lord. You are our source, and without you, we have nothing. Apart from you, we are nothing. And, Lord, without you, we cannot do anything. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, just be with us. Be with me now, God, as I come forth to try to uh, deliver this word, O oh God, that you have given me two dreams, God, and many others that you have given me, but I'm going to work with the ones that you've given me right now, and as I begin, God, you prepare the people's ears to hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying. God, unveil their eyes, oh God, where Satan has blinded them into seeing and knowing and hearing what your truth is, Lord, because if they had not been blinded, God, they would have converted and been saved by now. And so, Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, look upon all those who have backslidden, those who are lukewarm, those who are confused and deluged, caught in this spiral, God, of all this confusion going on in this world, God, with sicknesses and pestilences and plagues and diseases and wars and rumors of wars and earthquakes and floods and God there's just there's so much going on and we need you Lord we need you to awaken us all out of this comatose sleep that we have been in and Lord I just pray right now that you deliver your word like Lord Jesus just like Jeremiah you, you said when you speak your your words would be like fire father and Jeremiah said that your word is like fire shut up in my bones. Amen. And we have to share whatever it is that you've given us. We can't sit on it. We got to get it out. In Jesus' name. Now prepare the hearts of everyone that come upon this page. Bless them abundantly, God. Set them free. Deliver them. And change every life to the glory. For your name's sake. In Jesus' mighty name I pray. Amen and amen. Amen. Glory to God. I'm going to start off today talking about a dream that I had at 2.37 a.m. this morning. But this dream is pivoting off of a dream that, and the reason why I'm going to be able to give you this dream is because of a dream that he gave me a year ago exactly today. It was April the 20th, 2019. And I'm going to be reading, every now and then you'll see me, I'm, I'm basically going to be reading uh, what I wrote down because it's just so much and I need to make sure that I'm giving it to you just like I got it. Okay, well, my dream that I had before, it says this dream is because of a dream I had exactly one year ago today. It was 4-20-2019, and I meant to write the date 4-20-2019, but instead I looked it up uh, last year. It was probably around summertime or something like that. I looked, and I said, wow. I said, I wrote this in ink in my Bible that is dated 4-20-2020. And I said, wow, 2020. The year 2020 isn't even here yet. 
And so I said, okay, then there's a message that God wants me to speak on that day. I'm just going to wait and see. Well, at 2.37 a.m. this morning, he gave me that dream. Amen. And so God works with us in different ways. I'm glad that I wrote it in ink so people can see that this was the truth. Amen. That I'm talking about. Amen. And so I just thank God for that. But today, the message that I'm giving you, amen, is going to be among others, many other messages and dreams and things that he has given to me. And here's a dream I had on 4-20-19. The title of it is, You Are the Messenger. I had a dream, and I was in this large room with many other people. And this person was speaking on the kingdom of God and what we can do as a part of it. And many raised their hands for lots of important positions. And there were assignments that were being given out. And I sat there just listening and watching and waiting. And I wanted to participate. I wanted to be involved. But I didn't feel the desire or the push to feel that that's what I wanted to do or I must do. Then finally, at the end of the message of him appointing all these positions, the person said, I have one thing left, a messenger. Who will become the messenger? I looked around, and there was about 100 people or so. No one even moved. It was, it was as if they were afraid of this position. I thought maybe it was too lowly a position to, to take on. And then suddenly within me, I felt the need to say, the urge to say, me, I'll do it. I'll be your messenger. And he said, you are the messenger. And I was the only one that had raised my hand in there among all the people. Everybody else wanted positions and titles and things. But I would, I, they, they wanted to uplift themselves in the position that they had, but all I wanted to do was uplift Jesus. Amen. And that's what we should be doing is lift Jesus up. Because he said, if I be lifted up, I will draw all men unto me. Amen. So that's what we're supposed to do. So this is why I'm here on 42020 to deliver one of many messages and dreams that God has given me. And he's been giving me many. Amen. And I'm sure he's been giving you many. Many times he gave me things, or words, and I would just wait and sit on it. And then I'd go look on TV or Facebook and or YouTube, and I see someone else delivering the exact same word that he had gave to me. And he was just bearing witness to his word. For he says that not one tittle of my word, not one dot of my word will return void unto me. And even when he used Samuel, when Samuel was uh, under the tutelage of Eli, Samuel was a little boy, a little prophet, but he trained him. And he told him, he said, not one word of what you speak will fall to the ground. Glory to God. I can't be like King Saul. I don't want to be like King Saul. He was anointed by God, but he turned to please the people over God because he feared the people more than God. Amen. The lesson learned is that he got demoted. He lost his anointing. He died. Amen. After living in jealousy and murderous thoughts of evil intentions toward David, who God turned around in turn and made David king to reign. I have wrestled with the idea of speaking uh, live on Facebook or any other platform. I'm, I'm more a person behind the scenes. You know, I don't, I don't really like to be out in the front. Amen. I'll do what I got to do behind the scenes, and I'm good with that. But the Lord wants me to step up. Amen. And step out. And because David was a king after God's own heart, you, we... We have to understand that we got to see God with everything, every fiber of your inner and outward being. You got to connect spirit to spirit. Amen. The creation 
with the creator. You got to acknowledge him. You got to honor him. You got to respect him. Amen. Because today I've seen so much dishonor from my God, so much disrespect from my God, so much lukewarmness toward my God. I mean, we talk about him like he's our back pocket buddy. We can take him and put him in our back pocket. And, 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 and God is not our back pocket buddy. Amen. You don't just pull him out when you need him. And then you put him back and sit on him when you don't want him. Amen. He's not your back pocket buddy. He's God. He's your God. He's my God. He's our God. He's holy. He's magnificent. He's a terrible one. Amen. He's faithful. He's Alpha and the Omega. He's tried and he's true. Jesus is the son who died for you and for me. He's not just any man. He's not any old building that you see up anywhere. Amen. He's not any celebrity on this earth or any animal. But it was the infallible, holy blood of the Lamb that Jesus sacrificed for us. It was God's only begotten Son in John 3 and 16. Amen. You have to read that. And it says, For God so loved the world that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish, but shall have everlasting life. Amen. If you believe in him, you can obtain this everlasting life. Amen. I mean, there's a little bit more to that. You'd have to go to Romans 9 and 10 through 13, amen, to confess and believe in your heart after you repent. But without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sins. There's no forgiveness. There can be no repentance, no recompense can happen. No eternal life for our souls will happen if not for the blood of the Lamb of God. The God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Amen. And we want to look up about the remission of sins, the shedding of blood. No, rem no remission for our sins. Go to Hebrews 9 and 22. Now to the next dream. I want to talk about, amen, that I had at 2.37 a.m. this morning. And I have been posting for the longest about this spirit of deception that's been loose in this earth. But I see a nonchalant attitude in the body of Christ as well as in the world. But judgment begins at the house of God because how can you preach or teach to a dying world when you on the edge of dying yourself? How do you correct anyone when you yourself need correction? How do you guide anyone when you yourself are lost? It takes you and me to get back on track with Jesus. You know, a lot of us, we've like, been like choo-choo trains. We done fell off the track, and, and, and some of you are about to crash, and some of you already done crashed, amen? So you can't be mingling with the world and with God. You can't be between two straights. You can't be between two gates, heaven and hell, amen? The Word of God says, wake up. Come out of your slumber. We've been sleeping way too long. Some folks not only sleep, amen, but they're in deep stupors. And long time coma, uh, 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 comas, <laughs> amen, hallelujah. So let me share this dream that I had, amen. And just to give you um, an insight of some of the seven bowls of wrath that's going to come upon this world and the seven vials that the angels will pour out upon this world. Amen. You need to go to Revelation 16 and read 1 through 15. And I'm coming out of, of Revelations 16 and 13 that I'm dealing with these three impure spirits that I saw. Amen. And I saw uh, these three impure spirits that represented, they looked like frogs. Then I saw three impure spirits, it says, that looked like frogs. They came out of the mouth of the dragon, out of the mouth of the beast. Amen. You know they're talking about the Antichrist and the false prophet. These are demonic spirits that perform signs and miracles and wonders, and they go out to the kings of the whole world, and they're going to gather them for battle on that great day of the Almighty. Amen. But in Revelation, 
Amen. 16 to 15, it says, look, I come like a thief. Blessed is the one who stays awake and remains clothed so not to go naked and be shamefully exposed. Amen. You got to keep your garments on. Keep your armor on. Amen. Read Matthew 24 and, and 43 and 44. Amen. And Matthew 24 and 46, it said, blessed uh, when lo the Lord comes and he finds his servant doing what he's supposed to be doing. Are you doing what you're supposed to be doing? Are you doing something else? Amen. Many people in high and low places will begin to be exposed. They've already been exposed. And many will be fooled by all these uh, uh, spirits of delusion that's in the land. Amen. Because they're going to be fooled by great signs and wonders. But let me get back to the dream. Because I didn't jump ahead of myself and I get... Uh, so much in me, like Jeremiah says, like fire shed up in my bones, and I can't wait to get it out of me. Amen. So listen carefully to the dream, because with the world, and as it is, with the corona as it is, this world is in a state of delusion and confusion. Some say the corona is real. Some say the corona is not. Amen. The world is in a delusion and confusion state right now. Now, demonic spirits are already running rampant in and on our earth. Amen. They're in the atmosphere. Satan is the prince of the power of air. Amen. Ephesians 2 and 2. It says the spirit who is now at work, he's at work. Where? In the disobedient, the unbelieving, who fight against the purposes of God. You say somebody fighting against God's purpose? Yes. These, uh, the prince of the power of air, which is Satan. Amen. And all his demonic influences. And so it says at one time, amen, in the word of God, he said, uh, he was speaking to the saints. He said, at one time you walked in this mindset where you was against the purpose of God. You followed the course and the fashion of this world according to the prince of the power of air, but we no longer do that, right? Amen. At least you're not supposed to be doing that. Like I said, if your two children got off track, get back on, on track. But in my dream, I had a dream of frogs just everywhere. Amen. That's when I woke up at 2.37 a.m. today. And I said, Lord, when I first woke up this morning, I said, Lord, what is it that you want to show me? Tell me. And I was up praying, and I was waiting, and I was searching, and I was praying in the spirit. And, um, you know, a little bit, I flipped through my Bible, and, and I got nothing for two hours. I got nothing. I said, okay, Lord. I said, I'm sleeping now. I said, Lord, whatever you want to tell me. I said, okay, you, you just let me know. But not long after that, I had a dream. And I only remember myself walking down a road. And I ended up in this place. Like it wasn't some place I lived, but it was a place like a different country, like a place you go to study and learn. I made a notation on the side that says that we're in class. We're being taught by the Holy Spirit, who is our teacher every day. The many won't be passing this test. And so I was in this place where you go to study abroad and learn, and I just saw that there was a lot of people walking around, and it seemed to me like a university student or a place where people would travel to go study. And then I walked down this trail, and I went inside the building where we were to stay, and I came out into the courtyard and looked, and there were frogs everywhere. I mean everywhere. And that's when the Lord dropped this word into my spirit, and he said, this represents Demonic fluence is now everywhere. And I mean, I ran so fast. <laughs> I ran back into the building to warn them. I said, it's frogs. Oh, my God. There's millions of them. They're everywhere. And it seemed that nobody even listened or cared. They just kept on going about their talking and their daily walking and they laughing and having fun. And it was as if I could see, or I was the only one that could see, that something wasn't right. It, it, it wasn't good. And this, because there was no place to even step. The, frog, the frogs, they were everywhere outside. The atmosphere and the air, the atmosphere everywhere on the ground. Demonically influencing the people. So I left the place, and as I was leaving, I saw people on the top of the hill at a cliff. And so I walked up that way. 
And I looked at them and I could see that they were just looking down at the ocean and some had no fear. Some were just looking over the edge of the cliff laughing. And I made a side note to myself and it says that we should be looking up at the hills to which come at our help, not down. Amen. And so it seems that so many people were close to the edge of danger, but didn't sense it, nor see it. And I was laying on my back on the ground, which I thought was pretty strange because everybody else was standing up on the edge, looking off the cliff. And But I was laying on my back on the ground, just looking up on the ground, uh, uh, when I was laying on the ground. And the Lord showed me, he said, my back on the ground represented my back to the world. Amen. I had put my back to the world. And I had my eyes steadfast looking up to Jesus. Amen. He gave me that interpretation. But I noticed that I could turn just a little bit to the right. And so I turned over to the right to see the waters below. I, I leaned over like that because I wanted to see what, what are they looking at. And so all the while I was clinging to my white pillow. And I'm saying, why do I got a white pillow? And ain't nobody asking a pillow out here. But I had the pillow in front of me like this. And I was holding it really tight. And then the Lord whispered, dropped another word to my spirit. And he said, that's the comforter. He said, the white represents the Holy Spirit. That's the comforter. And the Holy Spirit is the comforter. Amen. God has a sense of humor, and I love it. In John 14, 25, 26, and 27. And, and in 25, he says, all this I have spoken while still with you. 26. But the advocate and the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you all things. I told you, the Holy Spirit is a teacher. And will remind you of everything. I've said it to you. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. Not as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled. And do not be afraid. Amen. But in King James Version it says. That was the NIV. But in King James Version it says. In verse 26. John 14, 26. But the comforter. Which was my white pillow. Amen which is the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things. Folks, we're being taught daily. Every day is a lesson. You got to study for your quizzes. You got to study for your tests. Every day we might have a test, a pop quiz, a pop test at any time. And he shall bring all things to your remembrance. What is there to remember if you never read the word? If you never get in the word? Jesus, he said, you remember whatsoever I have said to you, folks. If you don't want to hear the word, you won't know what Jesus or the Father said. In Luke 24 and 49, Jesus said, and behold, I send the promise of my Father unto you. But tarry ye in the city of Jerusalem until you be endued with power from on high. What power? The power of the Holy Ghost. The power of the Holy Spirit. The comforter. In 1 John 2 and 20 it says, But you have an unction from the Holy One, and you know all things. The Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost, the comforter, He will get into your spirit and, and push you, urge you, talk to you, speak to you, and let you know of things that are to come. Amen. In verse 20. 21 it says that no lie is of the truth and so if the enemy try to come in and mix in a lie with the truth mm -mm. lie can't blend with the truth it got to be the truth and nothing but the truth amen and how did god say that we have to worship him you must worship him in spirit and in truth there's no other way so let's get back to the dream now i was clinging to my pillow and i had just turned on my right shoulder to see the waters below me clinging very tightly to my comforter. <laughs> and it was a tour or something. It was a picnic. And mind you, like I said, everybody else standing up. I'm laying on my back, man. I got, I got my back to the world and my eyes up on Jesus. And But all the students seemed to be oblivious of the danger or just the fact that they could plunge at any time to their death. And I was just shaking my head. And, and I was sad because I could see across clearly to the other side of the mountain. And others were standing there just watching this great swirling deep ocean waters below. And then the Lord dropped into my spirit that 
the swirling, amen, was like riptides, and it's something that could snatch you under, take you under, amen, and tangle you again. And what did God say? He said, be ye not entangled again with the bondage of this world, amen. We're not supposed to get entangled with the affairs of this life. Why? Because that you being entangled with the affairs of this life and things that's going on, what is it going to do? It's going to suffocate you. It's going to take you out, amen. And so as I was standing, as, as I was laying there, amen, uh, I saw a lady, and she seemed like a rich woman, and she was beautiful, and she had this long uh, uh, stick-like cigarette. You know how they had those cigarettes, and they'd hold them like this, <laughs> and they'd go on like that, you know, amen. And so she had that cigarette in her hand, and like one of those Hollywood celebrities, you know how they did back in the 50s, 60s, I don't know, 40s, 50s, 60s. And she was wearing this white dress, and just like Marilyn Monroe would wear. And it was so white, and you could see it far, far away. And it was a white chiffon type dress. And she had been drinking really heavily, and she was a bit tipsy, you could tell. She's kind of bouncing around. And she walked right to the edge of the cliff of the mountain on the cliff's edge. And she was drunk. And she staggered to the edge and fell over it. And she fell and went straight down. And I said, oh, no. It was like a horror movie in slow motion to me. And she fell in slow motion. She's just tumbling down, tumbling down. And she fell into the ocean. And I'm kind of leaning over, peeking over, and everybody's looking down, looking over. And then suddenly she popped up out the water like a miracle. She popped back up. And... I was looking, and then the Holy Spirit dropped this word. He said, he said, there is coming upon the land. It's going to be fake miracles, signs, and wonders, but they are not of God's, but they are of demonic influence. Amen. Remember that. And then to the amazement of many, back to the dream, she began swimming sideways. <laughs> Again, the word dropped into my spirit. Many will be amazed of the signs and the wonders and the miracles that they see, but it's not of God. But she didn't swim like we swim straight. She went sideways. And, and, and when she was going sideways like that, it came to me. I said, hmm, that reminds me of them sidewinder snakes, you know, how they go across the ground. And she was doing it in the water. And so I'm looking at her swimming sideways, and it and I wasn't thinking, mm, how amazing. I thought, mm, that's weird. That's really weird. It was a bit much like, you know, how you see those women on the TV, they're doing these water aerobic shows and <laughs> stuff. They do their performances and their water dancing. And it was a beautiful water dance, and people was mesmerized and clapping and laughing and applauding and being entertained. And while standing on the edge of danger, I was scared the whole time. I, that I would fall off the cliff, off the edge with the rest of the people and the students who just seemed so oblivious. But it was like they didn't even care. Like I just um, even forewarned them about the invasions, you know, of, of all these uh, demonic frogs around, but they didn't even pay me any attention. And it was just minutes before she did this feat. So the weird lady who captured everyone's attention represents the whore of Babylon who sits on the great waters. The whore of Babylon is a symbolic of a female figure and also a place of evil. Amen. You have to read Revelation 17, uh, 1 to 2. And there came one of the seven angels who had the seven veils talk with me, saying with me, come hither and come up here, and I will show you the judgments of the great whore that sitteth upon the waters in Revelations uh, 2. 17 and 2, with whom the kings of the earth have committed fornication, and the inhabitants of the earth have been made drunk with the wine of, their, of her fornication. And in Jeremiah 51 and 7, it says, Babylon has been a golden cup in the Lord's hand that made all the earth drunken. All the nations have drunken of her wine. Therefore, the nations are mad. Have you ever seen such madness going on, amen, with this coronavirus and everything that's going around? The whole nation uh, has been shut down. God's showing me that through the Holy Spirit teaching me as I teach you that the world is drunk off of Satan's wine. 
Amen. Spiritually speaking, because in my dream, nobody seemed to care. It was back to business as usual. Amen. The blind leading the blind, people on the edge, people still, even after the warnings, would not listen to God's prophesied warnings to come. And the depth of which the people are willing to go, the depths of which people are willing to go out just to get excitement in their lives, just left me wondering why. Because life is but a vapor. We're all like grass. We grow up and we wither and die. I mean, life is short like that. And I also noticed that I had on this blue Hawaiian wrap. I mean, like you go when you're on, a, on the beach. And it had the print on it. It was blue, the background. But it had these leopard spots on it. And I'm thinking that old saying, like I say, a leopard can't change his spots. And I looked across the way. And I saw this other lady she had on a... Um, the wrap, and it, it it was blue with the leopard stop with the leopard spots and the, and um, she was being disguised as an angel of light, but the Lord let me see her cover. He revealed it to me the garments that she was wearing and that they were spotted. Amen. That she was 